What's up y'all, welcome back to Bass Fishing Declassified. In this video, I'm gonna use Google Earth and Contour Maps to show you my number one cover and structure combination for catching big bass in the late summer. We're gonna start here on Grierce Ferry Lake in Arkansas, then look at a few other lakes across the country to help you dial in this really, really effective pattern. Basically what I'm gonna do first and foremost is go into an area here on Grierce Ferry Lake and then take the lake down by looking at some past aerial imagery. You can only do this on Google Earth Pro, which is a desktop or computer version of Google Earth. I'll leave a link in the description of how to download it and a whole video walking you through what I'm about to do in this video. And what you can do with Google Earth Pro on your computer is click this little icon here, which is a clock with an arrow pointing to the left. And then you can scrub through past aerial imagery and find images of the lake when it is below normal pool. So like you can see right here now, a little culvert pops out where with the normal imagery that looks really bad but normal imagery it looks like this and then you have like a semi drawn down image and then even further drawn down image and this is super useful because you can then mark these areas with pins and then transfer those pins over to your fish finder i have a ton of folders over here they're all of my different like breakdowns from the past and also just different um, markers i've made over the years for myself you can basically just go in for example find a little area that looks interesting drop a pin like that name it rock and then you can transfer that waypoint straight to your fish finder just like that. So pretty cool stuff. I'll leave a video explaining exactly how to do that. It's more complicated than I want to talk about just in this simple video. But what I want to talk about more is the types of areas I look for in the late summertime using this concept. So in general, in the late summer, bass are going to start migrating into the creeks and into the bays in a lot of these dirtier arms of the lake. The water is going to warm up faster in this dirty water section of the lake in the spring, but it's also going to cool down faster in the fall. So when you get your first cooler nights of the year, the dirtier section of the lake over here is going to cool down quicker, and those fish are going to start making a push towards the backs of the creeks because of the fall turnover. I'll make a full video explaining the fall turnover in another video, but long story short, the thermocline starts to disappear, and the shad and the bass start pushing to the backs of the creeks. In this late summertime though, I find that even when you get those first couple cool nights, the bass will preemptively start moving into the backs of these areas in that dirtier water. I'm not really gonna be doing this in like the super clear ends of the lake, like down here where there's six, seven, eight feet of visibility. Instead, I'm only doing it in the sections of the lake where you have maybe a foot, six inches of visibility, maybe like three foot of visibility, like in here. So what I wanna do is basically find areas where these bass can set up and basically ambush shad as they move from the main lake to the backs of the creeks. And usually that's going to be finding a nice piece of structure with hard bottom. Hard bottom is critical whenever you're trying to find bass in the fall and late summer, at least in my experience. So what I'm gonna do is show you a point where I've actually crushed them before. This is a little rocky spot. And you can see it right here very clearly with this lake drawn down. Normal pool, depending on how the lake is at the time, is like this. So this is what the point will look like normally. And then as it's drawn down, you're gonna see that rock popping right there. That little small rocky point is a great ambush point where the bass can set up in the mouth of this kind of bay and creek, ambushing shad as they start pushing back in the creek. Now you can obviously find fish on like rocky banks and stuff like this too, but I find that these little isolated rocky patches are extremely effective in this late summer period. They continue to be good as you get into the fall more and you can find fish on like that rocky spot I marked back in here, for example, later in the fall when they get really back in there in November, you know, maybe even December, I'll catch them as far back in, in here. But in that like, you know, August, September time, most of those fish are going to be more towards the main lake on stuff like this. So what you can do is go around on your Google Earth and find little small rocky outcroppings and just drop a bunch of pins like this, and I'm just gonna name this rock, and you can drop that on all these different areas and then transfer that to your fish finder and just run these areas. I will try to just go around and show you a few that you know might be in the area. Here's a nice little like underwater rocky point that has some shelf rock or chunk rock and then transition some pea gravel. Again, normal pool, it's gonna look like that. 
and then drawn down it's going to look like that it's kind of in the mouth of a little pocket or a cut which looks great and then the same thing applies as you start getting back into some of these bigger creek arms or bigger bays finding any sort of isolated little rock through these areas can be very very effective it's not going to be everywhere i don't check like all the rock that's just like down the bank i like it to be more kind of offshore ish rock um, you're not going to find it everywhere. It takes a while. I, I'm showing you these like key little good stretches. Here's like a little rocky spot like right there. Um, but you really need to look around. It takes quite a bit of time to find these often. So I'm not going to try to bore you with trying to find every single one in this area. But that's kind of the concept of what you're looking for on Google Earth. Now, not all of these rocky spots are going to pop on Google Earth like this because you either don't have an aerial image that's drawn down or you have rock that's sitting deeper than what the aerial image is showing. So in that case, what I'm gonna do is pull up a, let's see here, I'm gonna see if I can switch over to this very cleanly. Let's see here, oh, there we go, look at that guys. This is technically advanced channel right here. I'm gonna pull up my contour map and uh, what we have here is basically the CMAP chart viewer of B. Everett Jordan Lake over in Raleigh, North Carolina. My boys over in Raleigh, you know who you are. You guys are watching this video. You're like, yes, he's talking about North Carolina lakes. This lake is a hammer lake. It catches, it takes like 25 plus pounds to win like every tournament out here. It's pretty sweet. Um, so I went there in September, like three years ago, four years ago at this point. I don't remember. Uh, long time ago doing uh, some on the water fishing lessons, which I no, no, no longer do anymore. And I found some really interesting rocky spots that were holding a ton of fish. And it was really the key type of structure that we were able to get bid on consistently around this lake and a lot of other lakes in the Raleigh area. One of the key spots that we found is right here. And it is basically this point that's right out in the middle of this short little creek. Now, this point's interesting because right in here, you have a ton of rock that is basically in that three foot all the way out into that 12 foot zone. You can actually see that high spot on the contour map relatively easily. And if we kind of extrapolate the look of this spot, you would think, okay, if there's rock here, there's probably rock there. There's also probably rock there. There's also probably rock over here. And there's probably rock over here. And you'd be right. All those places had rock. And what's interesting is even in the week and a half, two weeks I was there in September, when we first got there, we found there were some fish off this point here. And I think we caught like one four pounder off this point. Then these fish moved to this little point here. And we ended up catching like a dozen fish off this point, all with bigger chunk rock, kind of like what we were showing earlier. But like it was basically clean bottom and then chunk rock and then clean bottom. And then we have another point here that in the last day I was there, the fish kind of had moved from here over to here and this point. These two points were loaded up. So in the course of two weeks, the fish moved from here back to this part of the creek, halfway back in the creek, which is a very quick movement for fish, at least in my experience. But it was very cool to see that because normally I don't fish the same lake over and over and over again um, for like a two-week period. And... These little rocky spots are so subtle. You barely would think they're there, but they are offshore enough that a lot of guys would just probably put their trolling motor right on top of them as they're going down the bank trying to fish shallow. So that was kind of one of the deals we found. And there was a bunch of other like rocky stuff all around the lake. I'm not going to ruin all the rocky stuff that we found and caught fish on because it's not really that important. Um, I'll show you guys one more spot that... Uh, had some fish on it just to kind of give you an idea like you know there's a little rocky deals like right here there's a little rocky hump usually the way you can identify if there's rock in an area is there's going to be some type of high spot that's usually going to be a good indicator so like a point that sticks out like this that's usually going to have rock on it there's going to be rock on any place where the lake kind of come, comes higher up i'll show you a spot over here actually on falls lake where we caught some fish as well and just, guys, just to give you guys an idea of what some of these spots look like, we caught, I think I caught like one that was close to uh, seven pounds off of this spot right here. So it's, as you can see, a little bit of a high spot there. And then there was another spot right here, right here and here. You can see that there's basically a circle on the map. And then it actually dropped off in the channel. That was a really good little high spot. But any place where you have a little bit of a, 
high spot, a bump out, something like that, is usually going to have some rock on it. Not all the time, but it's usually harder bottom. And then you just have to determine how big of the rock the fish are setting on. Are they setting on really big chunk rock, size of basketballs? Are they on little pea gravel rock, transitioning to bigger rock? Or are they on big boulders? And you just kind of figure that out by graphing and fishing all the areas. So that is how I would look for these spots on the contour map. Let's see if we are good enough to switch back over to the, oh, there we go, sweet. Okay, we're back over here on the Google Earth. So let's take a look at Google Earth again, and we're gonna go over to a different lake. So we kind of showed you two more like highland-ish reservoirs, but now we're gonna kick you over here to Sam Rayburn Reservoir down in Texas. Now you can do this same thing, guys, on lakes up north, a lot of smallmouth and largemouth look down these rock, small rock clumps and rock piles and stuff like that on points leading into bays and things like that in the fall as well. So this is not just a southern reservoir deal. This happens pretty much everywhere. Even Arkansas River on like little rocky jetty outcroppings and stuff leading into creeks. Those gets a bunch of fish on them. But one thing that's interesting about like a Sam Rayburn Lake is that it's very, the bottom is very silty or I guess more mud and sand with a little bit of clay. It doesn't have a lot of like hard bottom. But every time I've been to Rayburn, I always end up catching all of my fish on where I can find rock. If I can find rock in the area, that's where I go catch my fish. And I don't really graph for a lot of brush or anything whenever I would fish here. I would just find rock and fish it. So here's an example of a little rock deposit that is in this general area here, and if we take the lake back up, you can see normally, again, completely out of the water. And then we take the lake back down. Where was that? There we go. You can see that rock deposit. So like that's a little rocky deal that is kind of in the halfway back in the creek. This is probably more of like an October area, but any sort of hard rock bottom you can find is critical. Now it's hard to find those deals on Rayburn because you look around and this lake image is actually great from 2011. It's like I think 11 feet low, so you can see a ton of good stuff. But like a spot where I've caught them before, leading in this mouth of this pocket, there's a you know a big bay here. There's a big bay here. This is kind of an intersection between the two. And one spot I caught them in the past was, if we scroll in, you can barely see them. This is super sneaky, guys. But there's a house foundation right there, and there's another house foundation right there. A little bit harder bottom. This is actually man-made hard bottom. So that is pretty cool. You can also find fish that are setting up around, you know, like stumps and stuff where there's an isolated patch of harder bottom surrounded by softer bottom, but those are kind of tricky and harder to pattern. So what I kind of tried to do, I'll show you a couple more that I found over the years, is I try to get in an area like this, a big, big flat. And I find this not just with Google Earth, but I'll also find it with, um, my side scan, that's kind of my main tool. I'm trying to figure out where this little spot is I wanted to show you. It's so hard because there's like, <laughs> it's, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So I have to look for it. There's some rock scattered out on this flat though, or not like super hard rock, it's just a little bit of stuff. But let me see, and you can see, this is what I spend hours doing guys. I just go through and look and look and look. You gotta have a really good trained eye to find some of the stuff. There we go, there it is. So you can see there's a little bit of harder bottom like clay patches right there that's kind of interesting. Um, just a little bit of harder bottom here is a little bit of harder bottom like right there. You can see that like little bit of shadowing. You have soft bottom and that hard bottom. That's a little hard spot that's just perfect for what these fish are trying to set up on. And you can graph this stuff with your side scan. You can set your settings up. Basically what I would recommend if you're going to graph for this stuff, guys, I'll try to find another spot. This is like addicting. I love doing this where I just scroll around, find another little like, there's a little bit harder spot right there. You can see it pretty clear like on this, boom, that, that pretty hard area right there. So what you will do is you'll set your side scan settings and you'll take your sensitivity down a little bit on side scan, or you can change your color palettes to like two very contrasting colors. So there's like red, green, blue, yellow. There's different color palettes on different units and set your sensitivity so that when you graph over an area like this, the softer bottom will appear darker or at least one color on your screen or just darker. And then this brighter spot or the rocky spot will appear brighter. So if you're using like amber color palette, this will appear brighter on side scan. The 
silt bottom will appear darker. If you have those color palettes where there's two distinct colors like red, green, usually red, green, green is going to be the softer bottom. Red is going to be the harder bottom or on blue, yellow, blue is going to be the harder or the uh, softer bottom. Blue is softer and then the yellow is the harder bottom. So anyways, that's kind of a tricky deal, but you can graph through these areas and find those little harder patches of bottom. And if you can find those leading into creeks, you're gonna absolutely smash them. So that's what I have for this video, guys. I hope that was somewhat helpful. It showed you a little bit of the Google Earth stuff, a little bit of the contour map stuff. And usually I'm looking for these spots again, beginning of the creek, like in the mouth of the creek, starting here in September. And then as we get into October and November, those fish will push further and further back in the creeks, but still setting up on those hard spots. So hopefully this video was helpful, guys. Let me know if you enjoy this style of content. Seems like you like my last video like this. So I'm going to keep putting stuff out like this. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to Bass Fishing Declassified. We'll see you all next one.